Hello, I'm Legendaries, aka CT Stealth, and I'm doing a two-part mini-series uh, about the differences between polygonal modeling versus nerves modeling. Uh, they are both adequately uh, essential to modeling, and depending on what you're kind of trying to do, will determine on which one you will most likely use. Uh, this particular video is primarily focusing on polygonal modeling, and the in basics functions of what you will be typically doing while you are modeling in polygons. So first I'll talk about the basics. I'm just going to right click on my mesh and I'll get these object these options. Uh, edge, vertex, and faces. The faces are pretty straightforward. They are the flat planes, typically three to however many sides. Although for faces while you're polygonal modeling, you'll prefer to model in quads. Uh, most things in Maya and other programs support uh, many different sides modeling, but uh, however, Maya tends to be finicky when you have uh, three sides or um, more than six sides. Uh, typically that's due to some rendering issues and or animation. Uh, it Clearly, it does depend on what you're doing. Uh, some games actually require you to triangulate your models. So if you are going to triangulate your models, make sure you need you model it in quads and then save that version and then triangulate it and save that version. So you have two copies. So anyway, um, primarily I always focus in quads and you need to know about uh, good typology. So I'm going to go to the polygon menu set and I clicked on Edit Mesh Insert Loop Tool. This places a, an edge. And if you note, there is now two faces here. So uh, that's primarily one of the basic functions of trying to have good topology is using uh, your Insert Edge Loop Tool wisely. So the other ones are the edges. They're also straightforward. They are the ends of the faces. And you can manipulate the, the edge to uh, for you know whatever you're trying to achieve so you know create the trapezoid type shape uh, the other one is a uh, vertex uh, they are the gi a given points I can hold down shift and just click as many as I want uh, just like any other type of selection and I can manipulate ba things based off a simple point the thing you want to remember about faces is that if you're editing them uh, and you don't want this, uh, say, this highlighted face here, I can press delete and there's no problems. However, with the edges and vertexes, um, if I press delete, you'll notice that either nothing happens or something will happen, yet the faces will be there. That's because of topology errors uh, built in within Tamaya. Uh, if you wish to delete an edge or vertex, you need to go to Edit Mesh and Delete Edge Vertex. That will uh, get rid of the vertex and all your problems. Um, for the most part, when you are modeling, you always want to try to start off small. So I'm going to click on this edge here, and I'm going to remove it because I don't need it for this. So I'll delete the edge, and now I have two faces. All right, so I'm. This is pretty important. Uh, is the extrude tool. It's located right here. It's also under edit mesh extrude with an option box. Being able to choose your tool settings before you use it. Most of the time I keep this as default. So what does it do? I click extrude and I can create more and more faces based off of the original face. This is why it's important that you keep your faces to as little as possible because if I come to the front here and say I have a whole bunch of subdivisions when I go to edit it I'm gonna to have to make sure I select all the vertices that are gonna be involved so the more subdivision this way and the more subdivisions this way the more likelihood I'm gonna to have to click and then deselect so what you need to remember is that um, you, you don't have to make anything as complicated as it has to be if you're going to make, say, I don't know, a gun, then you can model off everything in basic cubes. And then after you're done, you can, when you get the basic general shape, you can kind of um, 
well you can basically just start adding in the extra details so if I'm uh, I'm just kinda like just roughing this here so you know there's a gun you know you you would obviously have a lot more polygons in this and then you would just you know add in the edit mesh insert edge loops and add, add them and they would keep creating if you need to uh, create just like a single one not necessarily a loop you can come to the split edge tool which is a little split polygon tool and it's located right here it's a little I don't, I don't really know what that is. It's kind of like a plane cutting into a polygon. Or you can go to Edit Mesh Split Polygon Tool. It's located right above the Insert Edge Loop Tool. So you can uh, only have to deal with the edge. You just click one point of the edge here and click another point edge here. And you now have an edge only here instead of having a loop. If you're using the Edge Loop Tool and you need to uh, loop around something, you'll notice you'll get some things like this. This is because the, uh, the actual topology of the model is not yet correct because uh, of the different subdivisions. So in that case you might need to add a split polygon tool in order to correct this. So just like that, you know, you can kind of you can add another insert edge loop tool here and it'll try to loop around as much as possible. So um, for the most part, you need to be wary of your extrusions and your vertices. Uh, you can have plenty of cleanup tools located in the mesh and cleanup. Um, these can get rid of uh, edges that are on top of one another with zero length, uh, faces with zero geometry error, and faces with zero map area. Uh, depending on what you're, you know, after you've had complex models, you're probably going to have to clean this up. Uh, some of them. I would not advise like clicking them all and trying to adjust them and j just do them one at a time and just click apply and uh, that way you know exactly what you're dealing with and you can also fix like tessellation if uh, you know you want all four sided faces and if and you want it to split many faces from one of the four sides. Uh, the basic uh, topology you want to follow is four sided shapes and in some cases five-sided. Five-sided is our most common with uh, faces right around like the cheek areas and as well as uh, some of the forehead areas uh, but like I said it's imp completely up to you. Um, if you're going to be in like gaming and whatnot and you're gonna triangulate it everything eventually uh, once again I recommend that you do it in quads and then triangulate afterwards. I still though believe that you can get a lower poly count with quads than triangles if you place your poly counts wisely but once again it is per purely up to your discretion uh, any other additional tools here uh, I can just kinda go through them a little bit in case you need them uh, chamfer vertex I can click a vertex and click chamfer and what it'll do will create a, a, long, a series of edges and other vertexes around that as well as creating a whole new face uh, bevel is like uh, kinda like if I if you picture this well let me just show you because it's kind of hard to explain I'll click edit bevel there you go alright so you get this little uh, flat planes here along the edges there's also other types of tools you can use instead of just beveling there's, there's shaders but uh, I'll get into that in another video um, so we got uh, bridge I rarely use poke face detach component uh, oh, these two. Um, for in some cases, like vertexes, you can click the two vertexes and you want to merge them together. You can do a merge to center or merge. Uh, most of the time I like to do merge to center and it basically just collapses the two. And that's just in case you know you don't need the vertexes. Or And it's very helpful when you're combining two, uh, two meshes into one. If you need to combine meshes, you can select both the message in the object. So make sure it's green the object mode and click mesh and combine when you select them and they'll be a part of them and then you'll be able to use the merge and merge center. Uh, separate and extract are two different things. Extract is if they are one mesh so if like this is a face of a mesh I can click extract and now this particular face is separate completely from the original mesh. Uh, separate is when you have two complete meshes that you have combined and they are not sharing faces or vertices and you separate them so they are two objects um, 
you need to make sure that most of your normals are facing the right direction. That's mainly typically in rendering. Uh, if I go to click on, go to object mode, display, polygons, uh, face normals, you'll see these green lines. These are the directions in which the te texture is pasted. So if I need to reverse one of these normals because of topology errors, I click on the face, click reverse, and you'll notice the green line with the opposite direction inside the box. So that is, uh, well, that's pretty much the basics of polygonal modeling. You don't really have to do anything too complicated. Just make sure you have nice references and import them into your different port viewports. Uh, you can go to view image plane, import image to import the front and side in order to make your modeling easier. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and I'll do whatever I can to help you. Thank you for watching.